the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends and loved in this hour, we have come together to celebrate this funeral mass for William Coughlin, Jr. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you all. With your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Bill died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal life. The white pall is now placed onto the casket, a symbol of Bill's baptism in Christ and being clothed now is welcomed into the kingdom of God. Billy will now place the crucifix on the, on the casket. Lord Jesus Christ, you loved us unto death. Let this cross be a sign of your love for Bill and for the people you have gathered here today. opening hymn is number 635. Morning has broken. Number 635. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, William, also find new strength. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated at this time.
<clears throat> Our reading from the Old Testament today will be proclaimed by Bill's goddaughter, Anita Valente. A reading from Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. Our psalm response is number 474, fly like a bird, number 474.
when I am falling away. You extend a gentle hand, and I know you understand. Our reading from the New Testament will be proclaimed by Bill's sister-in-law, Linda George. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul said, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid, upon, is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. The word of the Lord. says the Lord, no one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This morning we gather in this church, this church that was a big part of, of Bill's um, life, uh, to celebrate uh, again his life, the life of William Coughlin Jr. And so we welcome all who are present and those who may be watching virtually. William Bill Raymond Coughlin Jr. entered heaven Thursday, May 5th, and he was predeceased by his parents, Catherine and William, sister Pat brothers Tim and Jack, and many beloved friends. So on behalf of the people of St. Thomas Aquinas, Father Paul Machera, and Father Stephen Agaro, I want to extend to Bill's family our deepest sympathy uh, to his wife, Millie, uh, his daughters, Colleen and John, Kim and Patrick, and Chris and Brian, uh, grandchildren, Seth Ian, Claire, Maeve, and Grace, uh, brothers, uh, Denny and Marion, uh, Mart and Susie and Richard, sister-in-law, Linda and Barbara, brother-in-law, Keith and Nancy, and their large extended family. You know, the Bill was again a lifelong resident of Binghamton. He was a proud Air Force veteran, a retired electrical engineer, handyman, avid camper, and Buick owner. He loved those Buicks, right? For sure. Enthusiastic trailer salesman, Oktoberfest organizer. Those were really fun days. Um, dedicated JC leader, Pee Wee football uh, coach, Notre Dame and Yankee fan. I guess he had his own special chair when watching, when rooting for those teams, right? For sure. Uh, he was the devout Catholic and dedicated member of St. Thomas Aquinas Church and the Holy Name Society. He's also a member of the AOH. He loved his life and his community and participated as fully as he could. We all know that he faced many health challenges these past few years, but again, as it was said, he was a warrior to the end. He never gave up always remained positive, never complained. <clears throat> he just faced all these challenges with a great deal of humility and grace. And his family is so grateful <clears throat> for the example that he gave. The family also wanted to share how supportive the community, this community here and so many of his friends and other members, uh, how they supported uh, him uh, um, and kept his spirit alive, again, especially after over these past few years. Again, I guess I'll always remember Bill as just being a very happy person, eternally optimistic, always anxious to kind of get things going. Uh, like when he started, when they started the Doug Fish Fry dinners, um, he would make all the arrangements from arranging the times, securing the location, making sure the signs were up all of course with help from the committee. You know, he just enjoyed doing this and was so happy that it was uh, so successful. And so he'd make sure he had those dates every year uh, to kind of lock it in. He really felt a sense of accomplishment that, um, that what he was doing uh, was helping, uh, so it's gonna benefit others for sure. I also know that being at church was so important to him, uh, but we know it was difficult for him, but Millie was able to get him on some different occasions, and he was just happy to be here when, when he was able to get here. 
and he just beamed. Uh, I think he was happy, certainly, to participate in the Mass as well as to uh, to see everyone here present because, it, again, it meant so much to him. Uh, he wanted to be here more often, but it was just really too much for him. I believe that he watched the live stream, so at least he was participating in some way and staying connected again to his parish family. Again, later in the service, a family member will offer some, some, uh, some personal reflections. Again, we know that his faith was central uh, to his life, and that is why we look to the scriptures uh, chosen by his family uh, to give us comfort and hope. That hope is based on what we celebrate during this Easter season, uh, our new life in Christ, the life, the Christ who lived, suffered, died, and was raised from the dead. And all of these symbols, again, that are part of this funeral speak of this new life. When we bless Bill's body with holy water at the beginning of our service, reminding us of when he was baptized and given a share in the new life of Christ. The placing of the white pall over the casket, a sign of his being clothed in Christ at baptism. And the crucifix placed on the casket by Millie, that Christ suffered and died for us. And the Easter candle assigned again of the risen Christ. And the light from that candle reminds us that Christ is the light of the world. And so we look to him to guide us with his light and that we by our lives will be a light to others. And so the scriptures we heard bring light to our lives as we deal again with the loss of, of someone who is very much loved. How often we have heard the words, to everything there is a season, again reminding us of the reality, realities of life, but more importantly, a time for to every purpose under heaven. You know, our lives do contain a mixture of things, joy and sorrow, harmony and struggle, life and death. But ultimately, it is God who is over all, and it is God who will give us the strength that we need to deal with the realities that we all experience in this life. Fly Like a Bird is based on Psalm 139, a psalm that speaks of the light that cannot be overcome by the darkness. The words of the psalm speak of how God knows us, you know, our hopes and our dreams, and is a part of our lives, always there, even when God might seem somewhat distant, when we are down perhaps or afraid. In other words, God is always present to us. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, reflects on his life and how much he had to face in his life, and he recognizes that his time is near. And so he wants to encourage Timothy to stand firm and look to the example of one who fought the good fight, who finished the course, who kept the faith. Again, we can see how Bill could say that same with St. Paul, as he had, as we know, so much to deal with, but again, never gave up. He just kept going right to the very end. And the Beatitudes teach us that people are blessed even in hard times because they will receive eternity in heaven. <clears throat> Those are blessed for having honorable qualities such as being meek, righteous, merciful, pure, and peacemakers. They are basically a way of living. And I think we have seen uh, those qualities in Bill as he lived his faith in action with his family and his church family and community. And we all have been enriched by his dedication and his willingness to serve. So now we come to celebrate God's love for us as we soon will gather around the altar of the Lord. Here we see happening what the Lord promised, and here we share in his body and blood. 
Here we are reminded that Jesus accompanies us in our journey through life, and he gives himself to us to nourish and strengthen us. He accompanied Bill in his journey and was with him in his last days, where he continued to be a light to him, a light again that kept his hope alive, the light that guided him on his final journey. Bill was a good and faithful servant, and the Lord will say to him, well done, enter now into the joy of the Lord. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. With the confidence, we ask him to save all people, living and dead. For Bill, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, may he now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, May he be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. For all the deceased members of Bill's family, parents, Catherine and William, sister, Pat, brothers, Tim and Jack, and many beloved friends, may they have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. For Bill's family and friends, that the love they have shared be a source of strength and peace at this time of loss, we pray to the Lord. Bill's deep sense of loyalty and devotion to God, to his family, friends, church community, and county, inspire all of us. May we too live committed lives of self-giving. We pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The gifts of bread and wine will now be presented by Bill's daughters, Colleen Malazzo and Chris Coughlin.
Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Bill may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so the angels and archangels, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we arrive for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis of Pope and Douglas of Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant William, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray in song.
Christ who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. So the Lord be with you always. So offer each other some form of the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Sinners now and at the hour of 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Bill may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May be seated at this time. Sparks of remembrance will now be offered by Bill's brother-in-law, Keith George. I come to you today courtesy of Patrick O'Callaghan who helped me upstairs. A century ago, Flannery O'Connell said it and Eddie Green put it to music and it remains true to this day and we all say it. A good man is hard to find. And when my sister Millie found William Raymond Coughlin, Jr., she had a good man, one of the best. <clears throat> he was a good family man who treasured his girls, Millie and Colleen and Chris and Kim and all the grandkids. Well, I wrote some of this stuff uh, to tell you what a guy he was, but Everybody has said it, and we read it in a lovely uh, and lovingly composed obituary. So I decided just to tell you a couple of uh, things I remember about Bill. He, I know he was strong and brave and dependable and loved and faithful and a patriot, a good citizen, and a proud, industrious veteran from a wonderful, big, Irish-to-the-bone family. And we all have different memories of him. I learned early that he had a good sense of humor and was a good sport, who enjoyed a prank. And he sometimes took advantage of the fact that he was a twin in fact, the first time I met him was in a crowded reception room. We stood and talked for a while, and I came away saying, he's a nice guy. But I wanted to introduce myself to Jack, who was way on the other side of the room by the door. And there was a lot of people, so I elbowed my way over to see Jack, and I said, hi, I'm Keith. I'm Millie's brother. And he said, I know, we were just talking over there, I'm Bill. <laughs> and at that, in that time, they really looked close. It was, hard, it was not hard to, to make a mistake. And I'll never know how uh, Bill beat me to that door or where Jack went, but I felt like I was a victim of an early conspiracy. My wife's, Nancy's dad, once saw Bill drinking from a fountain in the park and playfully pushed his face into the water. That was Jack, and they were both strangers. Bill could laugh at himself, too, as he did while relating these adventures. The camp campers at a beachfront park in Myrtle Beach once spent hours crawling and wading and sifting through sand 
looking for Bill's missing dentures. He happened to be in the water when a big wave hit and he had his mouth open. They never found him. He had to get new choppers on the way home in South Carolina. And he once dived or jumped into a swimming pool at one of his brother's homes and came up without his trunks. I played some tricks on him, like phoning and begging for bail money and discussing ways he could come up with the cash or scotch taping ripe tomatoes to the vines in his backyard garden. He swelled with pride when he returned from work and he saw those red beauties. And he got down on his hands and knees and was examining him and he said, Hey, somebody put tape on my tomatoes. I tried to get Bill to say he loved me. I love you, Bill, I would say. I don't know if it was a guy thing or a coffin thing or what, but he didn't say it. I know he loved me. He would just nod and smile. A couple of weeks ago, I hollered to Millie as she was going up the stairs and I was driving away. Tell Bill I love him, and there's nothing he can do about it. You know, he would do almost anything to help his church. Who else would appear on TV in a Tyrolean outfit with, a, with the shorts and the long socks and the suspenders and the little hat with a feather on it? And it was all part of his job every year as the Mr. Oktoberfest. More recently, Bill switched to Hustling Haddock, promoting the fish fry events. Even after he got sick, he arranged to set up the signs and he pestered City Hall to make sure there were bathrooms and parking spaces at Rec Park or wherever the sale was going on. He knew to the penny how much the, the sale had made that day and, and all, counting all the tips for the church. And as we all know, he was Irish. He was a partisan in the holy war of football between Notre Dame and Boston College. I recall how tickled he was one year when the Irish won the game 50, 54 to 7, I think it was. But the following year, Boston College won on a last minute field goal, and to Bill, it was a national day of mourning. When the doctor told him he had multiple myeloma and that there was no cure, the first thing he said to Millie was, well, at least I got to see Ireland. And when he got back from Ireland, which was a trip that he loved and was one of the highlights of his career, and he would show the pictures that he had taken and explain the countryside. He told me that in the old country they called him Liam Cochran or something like that. And I think he wanted people to call him that, but it never caught on. To me, the most amazing thing about Bill was the way he fought through the, every crisis in his long fight against the illness. <clears throat> his daughter, Kim, a cancer nurse, said all his body signs were good and he could be expected to live into his 90s and he could have beaten the pneumonia as he had done many times during his life. He would spike a fever and it would be diagnosed as pneumonia and he'd take some antibiotics and he would recover. But he couldn't beat the COVID. And that's what killed him, Kim said. He fought it hard beyond exhaustion 
And when he realized he could not get back to the West End, where he, where he lives and where his uh, lovely house wa was that he had taken so much care for all those years, he sort of gave in, but he stayed strong and he started talking about the funeral and pallbearers and the cemetery. His girls gathered and they held up signs of love and support and they waved each other at each other through windows. And finally they were allowed into his room. And they told him that a secret awaited him in heaven. On his last night, Kim stayed with him and the next day, the other girls were all able to join him. And as he transitioned from this wor world, Kim and Millie felt the urge to tell him the secret. And it was that his sister, Pat, had died three days earlier and she would be there to meet him in heaven. Now, Kim doesn't know if he heard or understand, understood it as he died peacefully in his sleep. Bill left Mill, um, Millie a Mother's Day card. His handwriting was shaky and the loss of his fingertips, some of his fingertips to the, to the disease made it very difficult to write, but he was always proud to scrawl his name Bill on the cards that Bill and Rudy and Millie sent out for birthdays and Christmas and Easter. So the, the uh, Mother's Day card said, and Bill was able to write Millie on the envelope. Then he dictated to his nurse, because of our journey, you've been my nurse and my soulmate and I love you forever because of it. Then again in his own hand, he said, Bill, all my love forever. You know, uh, Bill loved all kinds of ceremonial things, such as the boss and pops and concerts and parades and Irish dancing and piping, and he even like to go to Willie Nelson contest. He would have enjoyed seeing this ceremony with all his friends here today. And I wondered what he'd say. I think it would be something like, tell them all I love them. Parish Book of Life. It is based on our belief as Christians that those who have died have entered into eternal life. And the Book of Life is placed in a prominent place in the sanctuary, a reminder that they are now part of the communion of saints, and that we remember them, pray for them, and ask for their help on our own journey of faith. And at this time, Bill's wife, Billy, will inscribe Bill's name in the Book of Life.
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Bill in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bill, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. For our final blessing, I've been asked by the family to invite you to the uh, AOH following uh, the service uh, at the cemetery. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life him. May he rest in peace. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us all take our brother to his place of rest. <clears throat> our closing hymn is number 600, 688, Song of Farewell, number 688.